Do you want to collect cactus and cactus green automatically and separately? I've got a system here, don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance, in my farm tutorial series. And today, we're gonna to be making what I would call an interchangeable farm using a flying machine mechanism. It's gonna be quite a lot of fun to do, but it's also pretty simple, really. It's interchangeable because I'm gonna make it into a cactus farm. You could also turn it into a sugarcane farm, absolutely. And in 114, you could use it as a bamboo farm. So you could use it for so many different things. It is really, really versatile. Works in 114, as I say, as long as they don't mess anything up when they actually release the final things, because you never know, Mojang. God, love them. But shall we crack on with this? It is a really cracking farm. For this farm, we're gonna use a rectangular area that is 24 blocks across and 21 blocks up. So it's quite a big farm, but you get a really good yield from it. First step is within the 21 by 24 square, I want you to dig down one level, then come to one of the shorter sides. So if you look up at it like that, one of the shorter sides, the 21 long sides, come to one of those sides, and come in one from the corner. So you can see it's one in from both directions, right there, shove a fence post, come across one gap, another fence post, one gap, another fence post, one gap, another fence post, and carry on doing this all the way. If you find you've got fence posts that do that, you missed the gap. Always make sure you've got a gap there, there, and there, and you will find you'll finish up with the right shape there as well. And then what I want you to do is leave a gap, come down one, 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 and keep doing that until you get a few from the end there. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four gaps at the end. So you should have had one, ready for counting with Avo, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine so that's nine that way and in this way we're going to do it in as least patronizing a way as i possibly can one two three four five six seven eight and nine hey presto we have got basically a square that will give us 81 fence posts and that is what we're trying to achieve 81 fence posts so let's carry on making that square and once i've done that I shall be back. Look, I messed it up there. I shall be back. So you have laid down 81 fence posts. And on top of those fence posts, I want you to shove a block of sand. Now we're using sand because this is cactus. Now if you're doing bamboo, you don't use sand. You can use uh, just normal dirt to do this. In which case you don't actually need the fence post. So that is a simple system there for bamboo, but we are using cactus, it's more complicated, and you need this um, fence post. If you don't have the fence post, what happens is the sand obviously falls, and then you need to put back your fence post like that, and shove your sand on top. So let's carry that on until we have filled this entirely up with 81 blocks of sand. And we have got our pattern of sand blocks that actually looks really quite cool when you look at it from a diagonal like that. 81 blocks of sand in there like that. Now what I want you to do is I want you to come into your hole and I want you to lower it by one more block, the entire hole by one more block. And that means including digging underneath these fence posts. So just keep going underneath the fence posts. They will stay where they are because in Minecraft, gravity just is not the order of the day so get rid of all of this layer and once you've done that i'll be back so you are left with 81 very odd looking sand lollipops floating above the floor which does look very very strange but come along to the edge that you've got here the shore edge and count in seven blocks one two three four five six and seven and then the next block take it out and then take it out all the way across to the other side there you go and then all the way to the end i want you to take out the next layer of blocks right the way to the end 
so all the way down to there and when you've done that come back so we've created this awesome step down into this kind of floating sand lantern area above us then come along to the edge of your step and count again one two three four five six and seven and knock out the next one and dig that all the way along like that you should have seven here one two three four five six and seven and again get rid of this entire layer here and you should find that this is eight left what so one two three four five six seven eight that is perfect so there we've got it a nice step in motion all the way down to this line of eight right to this wall and then with this wall take out just the bottom layer all the way along like this right to the end and then dig out a trench here that is perfect and we're going to keep that like that just for the time being because we need to count from here one two three four five six and seven then dig out another one two three four five six and seven and then dig out another two two three four and five and they are going to act as our water transportation trenches we're using water because it is going to cost us way 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 less than if we did some kind of minecart with hopper rail system which absolutely legitimately could work or alternatively some kind of hopper system which is extremely iron expensive too so now you've got your trench come right to this far end where the floor is the closest take out that one block so you can access the trench come down to the end and in this very very last block here in the end i want you to take out the block and shove down a soul sand then the block next to it take out another block and put in some compressed ice this just makes things a little bit more effective you have got the chance that you could get the odd bit stuck on here and you don't want that to happen so we've got a little bit of compressed ice just to ease it along a little bit then get yourself a sign there 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 and there that is directly above that compressed ice and you can come along outside jump out the hole and refill in that block then come along to this end and do the same here stack out that block put one compressed ice shove in one sign so that is all the signs you're going to need take out those three blocks and shove in glass 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 perfect and then what you can do is you can get some water and fill it in one right on top of the soul sand one above that one above that and one above that so you've got a tower of source blocks you know it's source blocks because look the bubbles are coming up from the soul sand so you know that that is going to act as a great little water elevator that is that section done already and waiting now all you need to do is come to this end place one bucket of water on that and that will flow all the way down to there and it will stop at the sign now if things come along this they will shoot past that end because because it's a fairly uh, short water um, drop so it drops there and it only travels another two there's quite a lot of momentum there so when it crosses that ice there is no way at all whatsoever that that item is not going to go into that water elevator so you are quite safe that is brilliant you've got a bit of a choice now you can if you wish do this with water buckets or you can do it with ice if you've got ice you can shove ice kind of there miss a gap there miss a gap there miss a gap there all the way across if you wish and then you can break the ice or you can use water buckets so just put a water bucket there miss one water bucket there miss one water bucket there miss one and keep going all the way across until you have filled up this entire back end like that so you've got water source blocks across the entire end and the water flows right to the very end there that is the bottom section so now i've replaced that orange wall 
with something that is just a little bit more in keeping. The orange one was wanting to make me my own face. So I've removed that and just put some oak logs in there because I think it looks a little bit nicer. We're gonna put a row of glass all the way around this edge, right the way around, including past this elevator system here. Come out one more. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove oak blocks like that, come out one more, around your elevator, shove that there, and then carry on coming along this way here. Now I want you to make this wall too high, two blocks high, so this is one block, make it another block high. And once you've made it another block high, we are ready to start um, using a block that the slime flying machine is not going to mess about with. We don't want a block that the slime block flying machine is going to interact with. We want blocks that it's going to ignore. So we will be putting on top of this block an entirely different block. So I'll be back when I've done this. Don't forget to fill up your source block water elevator as you go, like I did. So before we make the next level, we are going to test out your mad parkour skills. I want you to jump from one block to another and when you get to the last one, I want you to put on a bit of cactus like this on each and every one. Don't fall in the water because you're wearing your shoes and your armor might get rusty. But get like that and then come back one, put a cactus on there and get one all the way along each of the, uh, the 81 blocks like this. That's great. And just keep on going until you've filled it up in its entirety. It's 81 lots of jumping, 81 cactuses getting taller. It is going to take you some concentration and a little bit of time. But you are going to get there in the end. I have the greatest level of faith in you. Don't you worry. And what you've got there is an 81 green block thing of beauty. It actually looks really, really nice. Come to this edge here. So this is the edge that you've got all of these water source blocks that are flowing downwards and build a row of any block that you feel comfortable laying down that is going to be non-interactive with a slime block. So you could use a furnace, absolutely. Furnaces don't get pushed or pulled by slime blocks, absolutely perfect, but they can when there's a lot of them cause a tiddly bit of lag and we're going to have some furnaces in this as it is anyway so you don't want to induce too much lag so you might want to consider furnaces they're dead cheap eight bits of cobble but you just might want to consider it you could if you want use a glazed terracotta that works really really well as well and I encourage you to do that especially if you've got a mesa biome nearby you can get loads and loads of that stuff I am going to use obsidian. It ain't that difficult to come by, really. Go spelunking with a bucket of water and you can dig out loads of obsidian in no time or go to the end and dig out one of the pillars. You don't need that much obsidian to do this. All right, so once you've got that one row along that edge, come along here to the last row level with the cactus, which is this one. Then come past it another two blocks and shove an obsidian or whatever block it is you're using right there then you are going to bridge across. So using shift click by crouching, you're going to bridge across and have a bridge of obsidian or furnace or whatever all the way along. There is two blocks away or two blocks outside of where those cactuses lie in the last instance. Now what that is going to give you is two kind of straight obsidian lines and I want you to join them up with a bit of glass like this all the way to the edge and then exactly the same on the other side here okay so the reason we can use these bits in glass is because the slime block flying machine is not going to be touching these side panels at this level but it is going to be touching it at this level so what I want you to do now is cover over this glass with another row of whatever block it is you are using all the way across like that and then come to the other side and do exactly the same thing like that. That's fantastic and you should have two edges 
that are made of your non-slime block interactive block. Now that's because the edge of the outside slide block is going to be running along this block here and this block here. And if it does that and this isn't a block that it will interact or this is a block that it will interact with, then that's going to cause the machine to break. It ain't going to like it and you're going to be in heaps of trouble and that isn't something you want in your life. And then what I want you to do is I want you to get slime block and place it on this end. So again, we have come to the end that is where the water source block is and bring yourself slime blocks times 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come outside and overlapping it, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So you can see it completely fills the width of that tray. And that's what we're trying to achieve. Then what we're going to do is we want to bring out two, these are just temporary blocks. I happen to have slime in my hand. Get yourself a sticky piston. And this sticky piston is going to face there in that direction. Okay, that's great. And then this also, we need to get two temporary blocks. We're going to put a sticky piston facing in that, whoops, not that direction, that direction. Then we can get rid of those temporary blocks. And you can see we've got a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then a sticky piston. And that is facing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That will work beautifully. So currently, this flying machine has got no way of powering itself. So what I want you to do is come to the blocks that are in front of the face of the sticky piston, there and there, and shove two high blocks. These are temporary blocks. Doesn't matter what block you use, but make sure that they are temporary blocks. Take out the two blocks underneath the upper temporary blocks and face an observer facing upwards. Now what I mean by upwards is you can see here it has got its little red bum is shoving downwards into the block that is next to the piston. That means that when it gives out its little redstone fart, which it will when this block is removed, that will then give power to these pistons which will allow them to push and pull each other literally in a little piston tug of war, a redstone fart fueled piston tug of war that will go all the way until you stop it, which is great. And then get yourself another observer right there, exactly the same, shove it facing up. You can see the little red bum is there, ready for the little redstone fart to come out. That's perfect. Do not, I repeat, do not remove these temporary blocks just yet. If you remove these temporary blocks, you will find your flying machine goes flying. And there is nothing to stop this flying machine from not flying anymore. And it will carry on and carry on and carry on until it hits, I don't know, something over there that you can't even see. And it will be lost forever and you will have to build another one. So don't do that, whatever you do. What you want to do is you want to come up behind. And this um, piston you've got here, come up next to it. Because what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to have a double obsidian layer there. That will stop that piston from moving past that because it won't push the obsidian. And then I want you to come along. You can see that you are one, two blocks outside of that obsidian row there. Come along the outside and on this side here, come out and again, two rows out, shove another two blocks like that. And this is actually a good time now that you can test your flying machine to make sure it works beautifully. So what I want you to do is to knock out that one and that will fly across without any trouble whatsoever. That's perfect. And then just to test that it will go back again, shove a temporary block on that and that works absolutely beautifully. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Make sure you get yourself an extra temporary block there. And there you go. You are ready to roll. This thing is going to be functional. And all we need to do is set up the system that is going to cause it to uh, bounce backwards and forwards across the farm 
as much as you want it to, as regularly as you would like it to, so as it knocks out the cactuses. And we're going to do that by using a very simple trap door flapping system, and I'm going to show you that now. So we are now about ready to power these puppies, but to do that, we need to get ourselves a power source that is going to flip power from one side to the other side on a delay. And the best way to do that, I find, is with an Etho hopper clock. So get yourself your hopper clock. All you need to do is get one hopper in there, point a hopper into it by shift clicking that into there. You can see it runs into that hopper. Get rid of the first hopper and then get that back in again and shift click into that hopper. You can see the hoppers are kind of docked. That little line on the side is docked. That means they're pointing backwards and forwards into each other. Put a comparator there and there. Just one careful point. We're doing this on the opposite side to the water elevator. So that's because that side of the water elevator, we're going to put a smelting system in, which is completely optional, but often people want to smelt the um, all of these uh, cacti to get cactus green. It makes sense to do that because you can then get XP from it as well. Then shove that into a block. Get yourself a little bit of redstone dust there and there. Then get a sticky piston. It must be a sticky piston. If you use a normal piston, it won't work. And shove it there and there and get a redstone block. And it doesn't matter which one of these two shove it on at the moment and whack it on like that. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with an etho clock, you probably are, but just in case you're not, we will put items into one of these hoppers. They will slowly pass across to the other one. When they are passed across to the other one, it will give a signal. That signal will pass through that comparator into that block, which will power that dot, which will power this piston, which will shove the redstone block across. That will then unlock the piston to allow the stuff to flow into the other one and the process repeats. When that's full, it goes into the comparator, powering that block, powering that redstone, which gets that piston to shove across because that piston is no longer powered and it just goes backwards and forwards and you can make it do it very, very rarely if you put loads of stuff into the hoppers or really, really quickly if you put just a few things into the hoppers. And it's this system that we're gonna use. And the way we're gonna utilize it is by taking a signal, whether or not it's there without a signal or there with a signal and then when it moves obviously this will have no signal and this will have a signal and we're going to split that signal very simply by doing that nothing more complex than splitting out the signal there so that signal is on when that is there that signal is off and then vice versa when it switches across really really simple but now what we've got to do is we've got to get the receiving end of this section here and we're going to do that by creating a step so come on top of the obsidian that is next to the closest part of the observer so this observer is closest that one's further away this one's closest put a little cobblestone block there shove another one there another one there and then turn the corner another one there and another one there and then come across the other side and do exactly the same. Now remember, you have to have it where the um, observer is gonna be closest to you. You can see this observer will be closest when it gets to us, which means it's the left-hand side, piece of obsidian right there. And then again, shove that there, step down, step down, and step down. So that's going to go beautifully up that way. On this side, you're able to do this at the moment. Shove another block on there, put a trap door on, and take the block away. So the trap door is kind of suspended there. When it gets a redstone signal, it's gonna flap up. And if the observer block is underneath it, that's a block update, which will then set a signal, and a little redstone fart goes into the system and pushes the whole system in the other direction. Now you can't do that at this end just yet, because there is a slime block in the way. And as soon as the slime block is not in the way, we can then do exactly what we've just described. So we'll wait for that for just a moment. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this redstone wire all the way around and up into that system there. So I'm gonna count up to 12, and I know you can do more, but I just prefer to not lose too much signal. I'm just funny like that. So that's one, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're just about to turn the corner. Shove a redstone repeater in there. Get some more redstone dust. 1 and 2. We can turn the corner with aiming right there. Look. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Repeater. And then the rest of the way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and on to there, six. And that is the redstone wire for that side. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Repeater. One, two. Oops, so we don't want two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right, we're not going to go twelve because we don't want to go into there. So it's going to be twelve repeater and then dust one two three four five six so that is now a fully powered signal and if we were to take away these blocks that will send the whole system going across that way we're not going to do it just yet but it will and that will start to cut these cactuses which will then go into the water which will run into the trough which will go into this item elevator which will shoot those items up to wherever we want them to go. And I'm going to show you where we want them to go next. So we're not going to have some massive super smelter. It just isn't necessary. We're going to have a relatively compact and a bijou collection system that is also going to incorporate smelting. So come in and see we've got one cactus, two cactus, three cactus, four cactus, level with a fourth cactus, a double chest like that and then shift click a second double chest in like that. Put a hopper into the back of those. What will happen is the bottom one will fill up first and then the second one will fill up. Shove a hopper into that and a hopper into that. So this is where the furnaces are gonna go. So the furnace is gonna sit there and there. Shift click those in, that's perfect. In the back of this, we're gonna get two more hoppers and on that, we're going to shove one, two, and a double chest. Now, if anything we put in this double chest, fuel-wise, that is going to feed both of those furnaces. So you don't need anything too complicated. And then we need to work out how the cactus is going to get into the furnace. So we need to put two hoppers, one into each of those. Nothing more complicated than that. We are also going to put another one another double chest here one and two and that is going to get another hopper right there and that hopper is going to feed our normal cactus so we can collect normal cactus into this chest as well that's what we're after right and then i'm going to get a set of steps where's my cobblestone steps right there and that cobblestone step is going to come upside down over that that will allow that chest to open if i'd have put a block on top of that it would not have allowed the chest to open and then we're going to come along one two and three and in this direction we're also going to come along click in one and two and then you want to build up a little step on both sides like that that is going to be the system that delivers the cactus to the furnaces and it's going to be, unsurprisingly, a little powered rail. Now, if you weren't wanting to split out the um, the cactus from the cactus green, you wouldn't have to do this at all. You could just have the water deliver the cactus directly into the furnaces. But I want to try and split it out a little bit. So I want to do it this way. And that is going to be our delivery system. We're going to shove a lever under there. We're going to shove another lever under there like that and that's going to work beautifully to be able to give us all of the um, the transport we need using a hopper mine cart backwards and forwards it will deliver into there and into both furnaces at the same time so that's perfect and then what we want to do is we want to get the water delivery system to deliver the water to our um, mine cart with hopper nothing more complicated and the reason we do that is we get ourselves over the second one you can put it over the powered rail as well if you wish that is no problem but i quite like to do it over the second one 
and just shove a hopper in there like that so that is kind of up in the air bring out some glass remember to shift click like I didn't and put a glass coming along all the way like that and you want to try and connect it up to where that is going to be to where that water elevator comes so create the water elevator so it's the right height for that there so that's a decent height system there and what we want is we want the water to flow from here all the way to that hopper now you've got some choices here you could make this piece of rail longer if you wanted to because the water is going to travel one two three four five six seven and eight that is the last one it is going to travel but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to raise it up one more like that get the water elevator coming up here bring an edge all the way around like this around the hopper and back down again and when we put a bucket of water into this system that will flow all the way around and onto that hopper so then again I forgot to do it don't you forget to do it make sure you've got your system completely filled and primed so I'm going to come down into the system here not so easy in survival there you go right so shove a bucket of water there that runs all the way down and onto that hopper so any cactus that is collected runs all the way along and into the hopper now the cactus is going to come out at a fair rate of knots out the top of this but it should just come straight up and down but it is quite a nice idea just to give a little bit of edge to make absolutely sure so what will then happen is the flying machine comes across the cactus gets knocked off cactus goes into the water gets shot up into this water elevator which comes around and around and down and down and gets pushed onto that hopper sucks into the hopper the hopper mine cart goes underneath it collects it all goes over these hoppers here put some cactus in there some cactus into each of these two furnaces the furnaces smelt because they have got fuel in the chest at the back and then deliver the cactus green into these chests very very simple in reality but let's give it a test so we have got our minecart with hopper running backwards and forwards across the rails there. I've put some fuel into that. That is feeding into the furnaces beautifully like that. And now all we need to do is to shove some blocks into our Etho hopper clock. I'm going to shove a full system into the Etho hopper clock like that. Absolutely. That is going to take some time because cactus is relatively slow to grow and then I'm gonna set it off like that and whilst it's setting off I'm gonna get myself a um, block random block that will do I'm gonna shove a random block there and I'm gonna get the trapdoor there and get rid of the random block the system is now primed it has chopped off a load of cactus there that cactus has been shot right up here we didn't see it unfortunately because I was too busy doing that but you can see the furnaces are now smelting that cactus already and we've collected some cactus in the chest as well so that is working really quite well that's already started to go look there we go and now all we need to know is what's going to happen when the next run comes along now you can if you wish have this all this whole system one lower so it takes off uh, two cactus or takes off the cactus at the second stage you absolutely can do that it works very well if you do that but I like to have it just take the top of the cactus off in my experience and you can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments below I find that cactuses that have got two blocks seem to grow the third block faster than cactuses that have got one block looking to grow the second that's all I find so that is a working system so after a couple of runs with the uh, flyer machine we've ended up with 35 cactus in that equally unsurprisingly 34 cactus in that 
more cactus in the chest, which is quite interesting. That surprises me. And so far, 54 cactus green already made. It's not, is it the most efficient system in the world? No, you are gonna lose some cactus from cactus falling into the other cactus, without a doubt. That is gonna happen, but it's okay because this can be done AFK, just lob it in your spawn chunk or sit AFK on it and you'll end up with a load of cactus because the cactus grows relatively slowly so it's not something you want to sit and watch but it's pretty effective and it does give you the difference between the cactus and the cactus green as much as you like and I'm not sure there are too many farms that split that out out there at the moment. So there you go, one cactus farm that will automatically smelt some of your cactus and not smelt the rest. So you've got the choice of having some cactus or not some cactus. And if you want the cactus to get smelted, just lob it in the top if you want. Take some out of your chest and lob it in the top and that will then, or into the uh, hopper that the um, minecart hopper is collecting from and you can get more of that cactus going into the cactus green system and you are a happy bunny. It is pretty simple, really. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it, and I'll keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.